I want to welcome our guest to the show, Justin Rolf. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Thank you to New Hampshire as well for tuning in and having me on the show. And uh, Justin, you're a, a now a professional boxer, and you're going to be fighting on Thanksgiving Eve here in Wyndham, New Hampshire. So uh, this is plenty in range for our, our listening audience to go out and check you out um, coming up on the uh, night right before Thanksgiving. Yes, I'm very excited for this, and uh, you know, by the looks of it, my opponent's training hard as well, and I'm training hard, and I'm hoping to represent Northern New England and make uh, everyone there in New Hampshire happy. And I'm sure you will deliver on that promise. You've already, you know, participated in one professional fight. How did you get into boxing? Is it something you've done since you were a child, or did you uh, reach it later in life? Well, actually, um, when I was, you know, about 15, I actually got into powerlifting, and that was uh, my sport. I've always been kind of like what you would call an adrenaline junkie, and in powerlifting, I mean, the way uh, your adrenaline got going was, you know, it was hard to describe, and... I had lost my passion kind of for powerlifting. Um, just, you know, time runs its course. You know, injuries happen, things happen, and uh, I kind of lost what drove me in it. And so what had happened is I got out of powerlifting for a while, and I realized how much I missed the gym. So I had gone back into the gym when I was, uh, I think it was about 19, maybe 20, and I was in the gym powerlifting again, getting back into shape, and there was a, a coach at the time. He was retired from training actual fighters, but he was running boxer size classes and I had seen the sign a couple of times and finally I said, you know what? I'm going to try this. You know, I just, I wanted to try something different. And, um, that's, that's how I got introduced to boxing. And I realized the adrenaline rush that you get from boxing, having punches come at you and, you know, just, just everything in general, just hitting a heavy bag. I mean, you know, and, um, I kind of found a passion again and that's long story short. Here I am now, uh, I won the Northern New England Golden Gloves twice, and I won the New England Golden Gloves as an amateur once. And, um, you know, now here I am as a pro. Uh, I won my last fight with a first-round knockout. And, um, you know, now I'm getting ready for my second pro fight. And uh, what was the, the, the decision for you to finally go pro? Because, you, you, you know, every, people spend time in the amateur uh, divisions. What was the decision for you? Like, now, yeah, now is the time I'm going to step up and start doing these pro fights. Right. Um, I developed as much experience as I could acquire in the time period. Um, I just turned 27 um, this, this past month here on the 20th. And, um, and as an amateur, I had, you know, quite, quite a few amateur fights. It was um, over 20 fights, if you want to count, exhibitions. And, um, you know, uh, time ran its course. You know, like I said, I had injuries from powerlifting. So, um, you know, fighters live in pain regardless. But um, I've got, you know, I mean, I just, you know, it's uh, – I don't want to, like I said, you know, I live in pain from powerlifting. I have, uh, you know, muscle problems all the time and stuff, and uh, I'm not using anything as an excuse because, you know what, when I show up to the ring, you'll never guess that I have any problems at all because, you know, uh, I'm an animal when I step in between them ropes. But, you know, I'm 27 years old. This is a young man's sport. Um, I figured it's time to turn pro. I fought, you know, most of the good talent in the amateurs, you know, around here, and uh, everything pointed towards me turning pro. And I did it, and I, I'm ready. I know I'm ready. My coach knows I'm ready. And uh, you know, now it's time to show everyone else that we're ready. And uh, like I said, I want to represent my hometown. Uh, I live in Maine, but in Boston, it's split up northern New England, southern New England, and New Hampshire is northern New England. So I'm coming in to uh, represent northern New England. So uh, New Hampshire people, they got to cheer for you, right? We're, we're northern New England. we gotta be got your back in this one. I, I, I hope so, you know, and I promise I won't disappoint. I'm an exciting fighter, and... Uh, one thing I can promise, I never promised the outcome of a fight. Edit on the uh, promotional video, he's telling people I'm getting knocked out. I'm not going to promise you guys that because I come to fight. In boxing, sometimes you box for four rounds. I can box, I can bang, you know, but I'm not going to promise an outcome. One thing I'll, I will promise you guys, when that bell rings, I'm walking out to the center of the ring, and Edit can have his opportunity to knock me out, and we'll go from there. <laughs> so I promise you guys I'm coming to fight. I'm glad to hear that. I have a big question here for you. Yep. Uh, I'm seeing the nickname Crazy Train a couple of places. Where did that come from? Well, um, it's funny because everybody always called me a train. Very seldom, if ever, do I take step backs. I'm an inside fighter. I pivot. I move. I move well. And that's another thing he's going to realize. In my pro debut, I did enough to win the first round. I fought a guy that had experience in fighting, but I knew as for this fight, I have more experience in it. You know, um, that plays a big factor in professionals. 
he's coming out of amateurs into pros. He's going to have an amateur. When it comes down to it and high water happens, he's going to have an amateur style still. So, um, you know, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, I got off a little track there. but um, No, you're, you know, you're doing great. Keep going. You know, like, like I said, uh, I don't step back. I am come forward. So people called me a train. And so what happened was we were in the gym one day sparring and Crazy Train came on. And just from there, you know, people were already calling me a train, and they're like, "Oh man, crazy train!" And it just kind of stuck. I, uh, you develop a lot of different, you know, little nicknames. You know, people had me as Wreck It Rolf from, you know, okay. Wreck It Rolf, Wreck It Rolf. But uh, crazy train man, you know, that's, you know, that's what we went with. <laughs> I like it. It sounds cool. You really can't get much better than that. Uh, Joe LeBlanc here with Justin Rolf. Justin's gonna be fighting on Wednesday, November twenty first, Thanksgiving Eve, uh, at the Castleton. In Wyndham, New Hampshire, make sure you get the tickets on bostonboxingpromotions.com. Attend the fight. You get a cheer for him. Where you're, you're from New Hampshire. That's northern New England, and uh, that's that's who he's representing in this fight. Justin, you were talking about adrenaline earlier, you're an adrenaline junkie. Uh, can you Absolutely. explain the adrenaline you had in that first fight you had with a knockout in the first round? Well, uh, you know, it definitely adrenaline takes over. I will tell you that. Um, my first fight, it was um, there was a lot of it, it got kind of personal um, with me, him, and his coaches and all that, you know, and uh, which fights happen to get that way. I mean, you know, there's a lot of adrenaline. There's a lot of testosterone. It happens, you know. At the end of the day, it's all respect. Uh, boxing, that's one thing about this sport that I will say is the respect that you gain for one another and the respect that you earn in this sport is above anything I've ever realized. Um, but... Um, like I said, the, the adrenaline, when you're in that ring and, you know, especially, like I said, when you win and stuff, it's just, it, it takes over your whole body. And I think, honestly, as a fighter in general, the hardest thing to overcome is to learn to control it, control your emotions. Because when adrenaline takes over, you're, it takes over your emotions and everything. So as a fighter, you have to learn to overcome it and use it to your advantage. Like I said, um, as an amateur, you know, things get wild, get hectic, and you, 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 get forced into fighting a different fight and you know that's the hardest thing and in my opinion that's what separates a pro from an amateur is being able to control all that so you're going to be able to keep your cool on november 21st absolutely absolutely i'll decide you know when if i knock him out i'll decide when to do it i'm not going to get excited and uh you know you guys are going to see a fight i can promise you that you're going to see a fight what do you there's a lot of other uh really exciting fights that night this isn't you know my fight's not the only exciting one. I can promise you guys that this card is going to be stacked full of amazing fights with great fighters and great talent. You're going to get your money's worth just looking at all these fights we have uh, going on this night. There's still some to be announced, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I just want to get, get your words here on uh, what do you think is going to make this one of the most exciting fights of the night? Because it's heavyweights, and we're not we're heavyweights that are in shape. We're not going to be the heavyweights that throw... 20, round, 20 punches in the first round are going to be dead tired. You know, um, we're two heavyweights that are coming in shape. I, I know at it. I've seen at it. We're from the same, you know, New England. You know, I'm not saying I know him great, but I know he's coming in in shape. I can tell you that. I know he's going to be in shape. And that makes me really excited, knowing that I'm going to have an opponent that's in shape and has some of the capabilities that I do. That's, that's what every fighter wants. I mean, I don't, I don't want to fight, you know, chumps. I want to fight someone that's good. And, you know, I'm hoping that it lives up to being good. And we'll see on Thanksgiving Eve. Joey LeBlanc here with Justin Rolfe talking about the fights. Uh, you're there with your, your coach, Mike Leary. What kind of training do you do to get ready for a fight like this? Well, it's, it's a lot different than amateurs because amateurs you just train in general. But as a pro boxer, you train – for a fight specific. Um, Justin had to lose some weight for this fight. His first fight, he was a little heavy. So one of the first things we did is work on that, get his metabolism going. Um, he's trimmed the weight great. Uh, you know, he, he, the consistency is a big thing with Justin. He's very consistent. He doesn't miss time, even when he's sick or anything like that. Uh, you know, and that's the biggest thing, you know, to be a success in anything is to be consistent. And now I'm talking to Mike Leary, the, the coach here. Uh, what during fight night? How does it, being on the sideline? How, how does it feel to be a coach in that situation? I'm, I'm used to stick and ball coaches where they're on the field, you yeah, know, calling plays. 
What is what is your role come fight night? <laughs> you know, it's a lot less painful in our, in our corners, right? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, well, my role is is really, um, you know, the, the the mental work is done. I just need to get him into the ring. Um, you know, to keep him sheltered from distractions. Uh, you know, keep him focused on what's in front of him. And for me, it's it's it, uh, you know, this is my my first pro heavyweight fighter, and you know, it's exciting. Uh, you know, like I tell Justin, there's been no better time in boxing history than right now to be a heavyweight fighter, a contender. Um, you know, the competition is not like it used to be. Um, so yeah, it's exciting. And Justin's a great kid. He's humble. Um, he works hard. He listens well. That's the biggest thing. He listens really well. You know, we're, we're pretty confident. And I, I wish you all luck on fight night. Of course, it's going to be you. a huge night uh, on the 21st. Uh, during the fight, of course, you guys have you have a game plan. Is that a static game plan, or would you change that, uh, you know, if uh, Edit comes out doing something you wouldn't expect? I'm uh... – well, that's why I said I'm not coming with a game plan, but I can adapt. We have, you know, whether you want to call it game plans or not, we have things planned to do when something happens. But when that bell rings, I'm coming out. I'm going to feel him out. We're going to see, you know, where he wants to box, how he wants to box, and then I'm going to make him box my way. You know, um, I, I adapt. That's, that's how I like to word it. Um, you're not going to catch me. You're not going to do something and catch me unaware and, you know, throw me off my game. You might catch me unaware, but you know what? You're not going to catch me again with the same thing. So that's why, I mean, I'm not coming with a game plan like I'm going to come out and throw three jabs, the right hand. I'm not going to – we're not doing that. The bell's going to ring. We're going to come out, and if he's leave, leaving his lead hand down or, you know, anything like that, then I'll, I'll make him pay for it. But uh, I'm not going to come out, you know, with the idea of no, knowing what I'm going to throw right away. Joe LeBlanc here with Justin Crazy Train Rolf getting ready for the fight on the 21st. Uh, one more thing before we, we wrap this up. Uh, what, what's your final uh, you know message to the audience here to get them to go and cheer you on on fight well, Like night? I said, um, this, is, uh, Northern New, this is happening in northern New England. Um, I hope to represent all of New England well, but right now it's northern New England versus southern New England, and I'm ready to represent Northern New England. And like I said, I'm coming in ready to fight. I'm not making you fans any promises in terms of how the fight's going to end. But I am going to promise you I'm coming out. I'm going to fight. And when that bell rings, I'm walking straight out to the center of that ring. And if Edit wants to tell people he's going to knock me out and if he's so good, I want you to walk out to that middle of the ring, stand right there, and let's bang. Let's give the crowd what they want. Come on, you guys want to see heavyweights fight? Let's fight. I like that attitude. It's going to be a great night. Coming up on the 21st, uh, final question for you. You're a football fan. Patriots are struggling. Uh, what do you expect in this game against the Dolphins coming up at 1 o'clock? Well, like I just said, they need to adapt because right now what they're doing ain't working. So uh, I want to see them adapt, and I want to see Brady uh, make some plays. You know, uh, I'm a I'm a Patriots fan, so I got to root for the Patriots, but uh, we need to see the old Patriots. We need to see them come to play. Me as well. Hoping the Pats do great out there today hoping you uh you know wishing you luck in this fight coming up on the 21st thank you for joining me today uh justin and your coach mike leary thank you all right thank you for having us and thanks again to all in new hampshire especially southern new hampshire thank you to boston boxing promotions peter zimbor you know um and i can't wait to see you guys come fight night all right thanks for tuning in thanks for joining us uh you've been listening to not your average show we're coming up here on the first break I want to thank my last guest one more time, uh, you know, Justin Rolfe, Mike Leary coming on the show. Of course, thank you, Boston Boxing Promotions, for uh, this great event. They're, I'm already thanking them. The event hasn't even happened yet. But it's going to be a great night coming up on the 21st at the Castleton Banquet. Uh, I, I, it's, it's a great venue. I actually had my, my prom there. Uh, it's a great venue in Wyndham, New Hampshire. It should be an, an awesome time, an awesome fight night. Plenty of fights going on that night. It's the first female fight ever, as well as uh, Justin and Edit. Uh, they're still announcing some fights, so keep an eye on their website, bostonboxingpromotions.com. They'll have you updated with all the news leading up to fight night. And we're going to take a break here. When we come back, it's football talk for the rest of the show. Maybe Let's bring a little baseball in, but we're primarily football here on Not Your Average Show. <laughs> 